All right, our next stop on this journey is the proximal convoluted tubule. So if we go back and take a look really quick, this is the nephron. This is the nephron. So far, we've made it all the way through here. Uh, remember, the blood supply is coming down here, higher blood pressure, because this is uh, thinner. The efferent arteriole is thinner. Remember, A comes before E, so I think the blood comes in here, then comes out here. Um, this is kind of like an ultra filtration device. Uh, the problem is, is that it's not super good and all small things just end up coming through here. Very large proteins like hormones uh, don't. So the small things come through here and uh, a lot of things are very small that are in the blood and we're gonna see all of those. The problem is, is that all the things that come out, what we want, these are the kidneys, right? We want the urea to come out, but the problem is, is that other molecules that are very small come out too, like a lot of salt, plenty of water and glucose comes out too and we don't want all of that stuff to go exit our body uh, in the urine so what we have to do is we have to kind of allow the urea to go through and a certain amount of water and a certain amount of salts but we have to make sure that amino acids and glucose actually come back we don't want there to be wasted glucose uh, in the urine basically so uh, that's the process there last video we looked at this and then now what happens once we get to the proximal convoluted tubule so this is a cross section through that proximal convoluted tubule you can see in the small diagram here it's this area here proximal because i think it's the closest to the place where the blood enters the nephron and it's convoluted because it's all twisted up like that and it's a tubule because well it's a little tubule so really quickly what's going to happen is you can already see from the cross section here and this is a, a diagram form of course but you can see in this very thin tubule that there's a lot of things that you recognize inside a cell that help you to determine its particular function. For example, if I see a lot of uh, mitochondria, that suggests this, whatever happens here needs a lot of ATP. So perhaps active transport for bringing some of these things back out. You can also see the folding the folding which increases surface area which is a repeating theme in biology increasing surface area will increase uh, the rate at which things can actually get absorbed so what kinds of things are flowing through this tubule at this point we've got water salt urea glucose amino acids among other things and uh, all this stuff has to come back well basically what happens is sodium ions are brought back so we need to bring some of the salt back in okay all of the glucose is actually reabsorbed that's one way that we, that people used to de detect uh, diabetics, basically, is if there, if there was any glucose that was actually in their um, urine. A normal functioning kidney will actually not allow any of the glucose to get into the urine or into the bladders. So the glucose is transported out using uh, active transport, and we have mitochondria here, which are doing that. And of course, we talked about the microvilli, which increase the surface area. So this, the mitochondria are going to provide all the ATP necessary to do this uh, active transport out. Glucose is special in this point, and you can talk about it. Uh, glucose is transported out by co-transporter proteins. They're just proteins that are in the plasma membrane that transport, that trade things. So sodium for, uh, for glucose, you can think of it like that, and it creates uh, energy for that particular process. Amino acids are also reabsorbed by the same process which is being described here in this block. So you could put it something like that. Okay. Mitochondria is providing the ATP. Other structural things that are important, I guess this is just called the basement membrane. Um, invagination of the membrane, this allows for uh, a greater surface area for some of these proteins and co-transport proteins to exist. The stuff that's in here, so the stuff that made it out of the glomerulus into here is called stuff that was filtered from the glomerulus. Stuff that was filtered from the glomerulus, so we call it the glomerula, gla, glomerular filtrate. Try to say that five times fast. Glomerular filtrate. Glomerular filtrate. So that's stuff that's in here and that contains some of these things and we have to figure out what to do with those things. We don't want to disappear into the urine, okay? 80%, um, well, a lot of water actually comes back out and water is very important. We're gonna see the role the nephron actually plays in water balance later in the stage. Right now we're here in the proximal convoluted tubule, but next we're gonna go to this loop of Hanley and then we're gonna end up distal convoluted tubule. Not much to talk about there. 
some a few similar processes but this is important and then finally in the collecting duct and how a particular uh, hormone plays a very important role there so the last two things that I oops here it is is that uh, 80 percent of ions are actively transported out so all of all these salt ions sodium uh, potassium chloride ions various ions that are in the blood that happen to make it through they actually get act actively transported back approximately 80 percent and water follows by osmosis so water moves to in basic terms an area that is more salty so when the these ions get pumped out the water is and is going to follow so the proximal convoluted tube is a pretty important point, a pretty important place in the nephron where we have to take back a bunch of the things that got filtered out. Remember, our main goal here, our main goal here was to actually uh, take out the urea, which is going to be processed and turned into urine. So that's the proximal convoluted tubule. Make sure you're watching these in sequence. So the last video was about the what happens inside the glomerulus and previously was an overview of all the big names and the big parts. There's a lot of vocabulary to understand the kidney, but it is really cool. And then we're going to go to this, the loop of Hanley next, and then the collecting duct, and then sum it up with a nice animation that's uh, available online, and then watch how some of these molecules pass through and make predictions about where they will get reabsorbed back and which ones will actually make it all the way to the end. All right.